Jack and Jim will have Walmart uh, associate associate town oh. milk. Jim. Thank you, Attorney General. It's uh, it's really a pleasure being here today, and I wanted to uh, thank you guys for um, for really bringing to the forefront this this issue. Um, our customers and the, and the people that shop in our business, um, four thousand dollars or six thousand dollars is a huge sum of money. Um, it's through it's through the uh, training and dedication of the associates behind me and the thousands of others in the company that. Uh, getting to know your customers, asking a few simple questions, that, that we have the opportunity to help stop some of this. And, and, and our commitment is to try to do what we can do to make, make it right for our customers. I'm very proud, very proud of one thing that Walmart allows our associates to do when it comes to uh, money management at the front. Uh, these associates have the opportunity to tell the customer no. If we realize that it's a scam, even if the customer chooses not to want to believe that, we can tell that customer no. And by doing that, uh, the, the, the ladies behind us and, and their counterparts uh, have done, a, done a, a tremendous job of helping save quite a bit of money for the customer. Uh, we're here today, um, I'm here today, to honor the two ladies that work, work uh, for me and are standing behind me because, because um, you know, with, with uh, Tama being with the company for more than 14 years, it's really, it's really an amazing thing you absolutely know your customer the way she knows her customer and she's able to take care of the things that she needs to take care of. And so I'm going to have Tama um, give you a little bit of a conversation about what she looks for and what she does when the customer goes to the service desk. Tama. You're on. Hi. When a customer comes in, it's usually the elderly and we'll just you know find out their dollar amounts and where they're sending it to and then we just ask them if they know the person that they're sending it to and and a lot of times I'll tell them or ask them you know you've worked all your life to earn this money and why would you want to just throw it away to a scam artist and um, that's really about it I mean we just ask questions all the time lots of questions and we do have people that refuse to believe us and we just constantly ask them and when we deny them and they do come back and we let the other associates know their names and stuff so they can deny them. Maybe, maybe Tammy, you could tell them how often uh, you all get people who come in and you actually say no to because you think it's, you think it's a scam. We do probably around 10 a month that come in and want to send money. And a lot of it's to different countries. Um, the one that I stopped recently was in Florida and she thought it was her grandson, and they were sending it through um, Green Dot, which is for a prepaid Visa card, and uh, she was going to send them for $4,000. And I just asked her, and then she was just so grateful, you know, that I saved her that $4,000. And we also have pamphlets that we hand out that for people to uh, read so they can recognize uh, scams also. Is it all right if I ask a question? Um, what, what let's, wait, let's, let's wait till we okay. get We got one more. Okay. I got I got us out of the sink. I'm sorry. <laughs> and we'll get some questions from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Let me now introduce uh, Joe Patton, uh, who's going to tell you about a story, uh, a sad story. Uh, but we appreciate uh, Joe coming forward and, and talking about what, uh, what happened to him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I wish I would have come to Walmart when this uh, scam started because I firmly believe I have $6,500 in my pocket today that I was scammed out of. Uh, about 1 o'clock one afternoon, I get a call. I was checking a nap, as I customarily do, and uh, was awakened from this nap by a gentleman on the other end saying, uh, hello, do you know who this is? And I uh, thought, quickly that it was indeed my grandnephew who had just visited recently at OSU and been a guest in my home and his voice was on my mind and I said, is this Daryl, dental student from New York University? He says, yes, Uncle Joe, and he says, you're my last resort on serious trouble. I was on spring break in uh, Houston in a timeshare of a friend of mine and uh, we went out for a leisurely dinner on a Wednesday evening and I uh, had a fine dinner and a couple of cocktails too many 
and on the way back to the town share was involved in a minor incident with a rental car and uh, the police were called and it was determined that I was driving under the influence and I was arrested and I spent last evening in jail in Houston, Texas and I uh, need an attorney and uh, fees to get out of here so I can return to my classroom duties in New York and uh, you're my last resort. I don't want my mother and father or any of my other family members involved in. They, they are very proud of me and know that this is completely out of the ordinary for me. And I don't want to ruin my fine, gentle uh, uh, reputation or anything else. So can you help me? I only had about 45 minutes that day, and how I pulled this off, I'll never know. But in that 45 minutes, I got up from my nap and went to a local bank and uh, found that that local bank was also a representative of uh, Western Union and uh, was able to get the money, give it to Western Union, get it transferred within about 30 minutes, and I was back on the road, transaction completed completely in about 45 minutes. For some reason, later on that afternoon, I got a call from uh, this guy pretending to be my grand nephew and said, uh, there's a slight change in our uh, needs and would you please go to the bank tomorrow morning and change the recipient from Harold Deal, Harold McGill, the uh, attorney, to his secretary, Sharon Wilson's name, because Harold is involved in litigations and depositions, can I pick the money up, and his secretary is free to do so, and we need you to change the recipient's name from one person to another. Can you do that? I said, well, I'm not sure, but I'll give it a whirl. And he said, well, it's desperate because I'm still in jail and still needing to get on a plane and get home. Will you please do this for me? So I go to the bank and was able to very quickly make this change. Within 30 minutes of that transaction, the money was picked up and gone forever. Later, on Saturday morning, the following day, I'm on a, a bus with some Shriners telling a story, and a couple of retired attorneys are listening. And when the bus uh, stopped, uh, one of the attorneys said, Mr. Patton, you need to stop whatever you were going to do this morning and get on the phone and try to... Uh, get this situation you described reversed because you're a victim of a scam. And uh, he confirmed what I was starting to already feel on my own, but by that time the money was long gone. To make a long story short, I lost $6,200 in, in the principal money plus fees of $335 for a total of $6,535. And, uh, you know, I missed a, a dozen or more easily opportunities to have prevented this from happening had I known what these gentlemen and ladies had talked about earlier today, I certainly would have confirmed that this was or was not my grand nephew. But, uh, I made the mistake and from what I hear from the Federal Trade Commission and others, I'm, I'm kind of like a, a perfect candidate. I value my family ties, I have the resources to do what they want, and uh, I'm a man who gets things done. So I, I had all the right things going. And in their direction, unfortunately, so that's my story.